Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and today we'll be taking a look at the green flu virus that was featured in the awesome 2008 cooperative action horror game Left 4 Dead, which was developed by Valve. The green flu virus was fundamentally the name given to an unknown pathogen that had caused most people who came into contact with it to change into homicidal, zombie-like beings known as the infected. Operating in a manner similar to rabies-like pathogens, the Civil Emergency and Defense Agency had initially designated it as a form of influenza, though it is later revealed to have been a cover-up employed by the government to avoid mass panic. To combat these false statements and attempts at misdirection, many people took to writing graffiti in the streets saying, Not a flu, which can be seen throughout the series. There were also numerous messages written to loved ones, warning them about the outbreak. These messages often included a few theories held by the survivors as to the origins of the infection, ranging from government tampering, aliens, to the act of God. Regardless of this, many materials from multiple sources did confirm that it was in essence a virus that had mutated from the rabies strain, though there is no further clarification of this. While most people who came into contact with the green flu virus became infected, there were a handful of survivors that were believed to be immune to the virus, a trait that was thought to have been passed down through their father's genes. The most common theory circulating to explain this was that the gene that had made people resistant was a recessive allele on the X chromosome. During the introduction movie to the first game in the series, the video started with a cryptic statement reading, two weeks after infection, implying that a single individual was once infected with green flu. The entire city also appears as though most of the population there had been infected within the initial 14 days. What's not immediately clear, however, was the means of infection, with speculation among the survivors ranging from it being a bloodborne pathogen, capable of being transferred through bites, to one that was airborne. Both of these theories are eventually revealed to be true, as the green flu continued to evolve during its spread, increasing the rate of infection exponentially. Though a small number were fortunate enough to have a natural immunity to the green flu, many were actually asymptomatic carriers of the virus. This meant that while they were infected with the pathogen, they did not display any of the symptoms or effects. Visibly unaffected by the pathogen themselves, as carriers, they were able to unknowingly spread the infection, which led many of the survivors to avoid both the infected and people in general for fear of contracting the green flu virus. Green flu would essentially reside within an infected host's blood and saliva, much like rabies, and would be transmitted through the bites of the infected, as well as general fluid exchange. In the Sacrifice comic series released by Valve in 2010, it's mentioned that the virus was sometimes airborne, and sometimes not, and I believe it's this airborne strain of the virus that would explain the speed at which the infection spread. Though there has been no official confirmation by Valve on how long it took for an infected person to turn, there is a conversation written in graffiti on the wall of the rooftop finale starting safe house. There, a number of unnamed survivors wrote down the time that they thought it would take to change with multiple corrections from four days all the way down to five minutes, which I believe meant that the time it took to turn after infection varied from person to person due to a number of factors, including, but not limited to, the means of transmission, the dosage of the virus transmitted, all the way down to body size, among other variables. With regards to mutations caused by green flu, the effects on the general population varied, with the average infected person becoming a common infected. These common infected variants had deathly pale skin, yellow eyes, visible hair loss, and a weakened body structure. Through unexplained means, a small percentage of infected humans would undergo a dramatic mutation, eventually turning into one of the special infected, each with their own unique inhuman abilities. Across both games in the series, four of these special infected, the Hunter, Smoker, Charger, and Jockey, would attempt to pin your characters down while the Horde attacked you, forcing you to rely on the assistance of other survivors to knock them off. The Boomer and Spitter acted as range support for the first four, as their attacks would help slow down the survivors enough for the first four to dominate and pin them down. The final two special infected types were the Tank and the Witch, which were considered to be the boss equivalents in the infected hierarchy, as they had a very high amount of health, which spawned infrequently compared to the other types, and they also had the ability to kill a survivor within a matter of seconds. The Hunter was a stealthy special infected that could pounce and pin down survivors while it furiously clawed at their abdomen. Extremely fast and agile, it was capable of scaling walls with ease in order to facilitate its stealthy attacks. Due to their limited number of visible mutations, they could easily be mistaken for common infected, that is of course until they attacked you. The smokers were sneaky serpent-like ambushes, they would use their long tongues to pull survivors towards them, whilst also simultaneously strangling them. As the name would suggest, their death would emit unpleasant smoke that would impair the survivor's vision. 
The charger was a special infected that appeared in Left 4 Dead 2, which would charge at a group of survivors and use its oversized arm to grab one of them and thrash them into the earth repeatedly without mercy. Also introduced into the second Left 4 Dead game was the Jockey, which was an annoying special infected type that attacked the survivors by clinging to them from behind and riding them like a horse. While they were on top of you, they could also use their weight to steer you away from your group and directly into danger. The Boomer was a large infected type that would vomit infected bile at survivors, which temporarily blinded them and drew a horde of common infected to their location. When they died, they would explode, blinding the survivors with their infected innards, whilst also causing them to stumble back a few feet. Much like the Boomer, the Spitter was also another ranged attacker that possessed the ability to spit a green ball of acid from long distances, which, upon hitting the ground, would expand into a large puddle that dealt damage to any survivors that came into contact with it. The large tank was the largest and strongest of all the infected, and could easily wipe out a team in seconds. Reasonably quick for his size, the behemoth would only slow down after being hit by a heavy barrage of automatic weapons fire or after being set alight. His phenomenal punch was capable of sending survivors flying, rendering them temporarily defenseless. He would also throw chunks of concrete that he ripped from the ground to stun the survivors, as well as punch large objects such as cars with so much force that they would fly towards them with enough momentum to instantly kill. Now, the Witch was the second boss type, and one of the worst obstacles that you could come across in the game. Appearing only a few times per campaign, the Witch would remain passive until provoked by flashlights, gunfire, or survivors within close proximity. She was immensely powerful, capable of incapacitating and even killing survivors with one hit. While the Witch herself could be killed, her increased health made this an arduous task. During the game, it's not explained which factors led to some victims becoming common infected while others became special infected, but I think there's a strong possibility that it could be attributed to genetic and biochemical differences among individuals. For example, the smokers were likely to have been smokers in real life. The mutation that created the tanks may be the result of interaction with bodybuilding supplements, and the witches were probably the result of their unstable mental states bonding with green flu. On the cedar posters found in the airports, it suggested that the infection may have been related to livestock, and later on in the campaign, we encounter several deceased cows stacked on top of each other, with the skin around their skulls missing, indicating that rabies tests were performed on the animals. One of the playable characters in Left 4 Dead 2, named Rochelle, even mentions that the news had claimed the virus initially spread through livestock. The cedar map of the United States also showed that the epicenter of the infection was in Pennsylvania, where it quickly spread to the east before infecting the rest of the country. With so much ambiguity in the games, I wanted to offer up some of my theories as to how the green flu came to be, which will fall into two categories of it either being made by humans or it being an act of nature. It's possible that the green flu, like many pathogens that had come before it, was purely the result of a chance mutation of the rabies virus in a specific animal, which infected patient zero and initiated the apocalypse. Though an act of nature is entirely plausible, I think it's more likely to have been made by humans, either as an experimental vaccine gone wrong, or a biochemical weapon developed by the government that broke containment and overwhelmed those that were working on it. The constant misdirection and signs saying that it was a flu posted by the government to avoid mass panic already revealed an aspect of concealment in keeping with those who would want to keep a low profile and avoid blame. Anyway, I'm curious to hear some of your theories, so please share those in the comments. If you haven't played the games, I've left the link to where you can purchase them below. Well, that's all for today, folks. Thanks to all of you guys who requested we take a look at the green flu virus featured in Left 4 Dead. If there's any other stuff you'd like me to check out, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. Hold up. Ain't seen anything like this before.